Today I'm taking a look at the Fenersi DST-201 Multifunction Multimeter Oscilloscope. So we got our instructions, and those are in full color. And here is the scope. We got a decently sized display on there. We have our multimeter dial. We have our multimeter probe points right here on the bottom. And we have our interface buttons right here on the side. On top, we got BNC connectors. So we got our signal generator here on the left, and we got our oscilloscope here on the right. This does have nice rubber padding here on the bottom as well as on the top. So we got our power button, and we've got what looks like our charging port. That is a USB C, and we have a power indicator light right there. So we have got two sets of our BNC to alligator clips. We've got our multimeter probe. Those do come capped, so you don't have to worry about anything getting inside there. A simple banana clips, so black to com and red to voltage. And we also have our milliamps and amp port. These also appear to be covered. Oh yeah, those got nice sharp contacts on it. And this is kind of nice, so we actually have a temperature probe. So we can take this out and plug this in instead. And if we set this to the thermometer, we can throw the end of this inside of our computer case so we can find out what the temperature is in there. So, let's turn this guy on. That's got a very nice looking display on it. So we've got multimeter, oscilloscope, signal generator, settings, and back to multimeter. Let's check our multimeter. So right now we are at 19 degrees Celsius. And if I cover this with my fingers, we can see that that is warming up. So that's nice, so this does work. That's also a very handy thing just to have because not all multimeters actually come with one of these things. Most multimeters can use one, so I'm glad that they actually included this. So let's go back to voltage. We do have a stand on the back of this guy, so we can stand that up. And if we probe. All right, so right now it's trying to read DC voltage. I'm going to hit enter. And we are now on AC voltage. And there we go, 120. Okay, and we do have auto measurement. So, just out of curiosity, I'm going to put this... Okay, so it does go automatically back to DC. If we put it on automatic, then it's automatically going to set it to whatever voltage we need. And it displays AC there on the top. And I do have to say that I do appreciate those large numbers on there, so I can easily read it, even with my aging eyes. Let's go to ohms. Okay. So that does read. Let's hear the beep. Okay, that's excellent. So this does have a fairly quick response on it. That's important because if you're just going through quickly and stabbing at things, you don't want to be missing because it has a delay in it. This one's fairly quick, so that's excellent. We got diode. We have capacitance. We have hertz. So this should say 60 hertz. Yeah, 60.03. We have the thermal probe. Then we have milliamps and amps. So we've got a full multimeter in this guy. Oh, and... We can't see on here. It does give us a warning. Now we need to swap to the proper port. So that's nice. Doesn't stop there. Let's go ahead and use our oscilloscope. So we started, we could go to oscilloscope. I'm just going to hit mode to swap it right now. So now we are in oscilloscope. If we hit it again, we go back to our signal generator and then the multimeter and the oscilloscope again. And all we have to do is push that in, give it a small twist. Now I'm going to grab my alligator clip. I'm going to connect it black to black. So that's black to line and red to our neutral. And plug that in. Let's hit auto. Okay, and we have got our wave. Now, it did not give us quite the wave I was looking for, but let's go ahead and see if we can adjust that. So, okay, so we can change the frequency. So it's going up to 10 volts. So we're on X1. Let's go ahead and press and hold mode. So instead of X1, we want that on times 10. And we can change the edge. So right now it's referencing off the front of the wave. We can change that to the end of the wave. We also have AC or DC. We're going to leave it on AC because we are checking AC. All right, so let's hit auto again. Okay, so it looks like the max reference we're going to be able to get out of here is 100 volts. And that is just going to be because of the style of probe that we have. Let's go ahead and unplug this guy. I'm going to grab my probe for my 210. So this is a 6100. And we currently have that set to by 10. And that does plug in just the same. So we'll clip that onto our line and onto our neutral. So if we plug this guy in, now we have got our wave. Cool. So the fact of the matter is, this will work. But if you're going to be working on 120 volts, then a dedicated probe is going to be better. One of my favorite things of doing with an oscilloscope is always going to be to check an inverter, something like this. I already know that this is a modified sine wave inverter, but that is one of the things I like checking with these. Just because there are some inverters that say that they are a pure sine wave and some that say that they are a modified. Pure sine wave is going to have that nice round wavy pattern on it. Modified sine wave is going to have a jagged pattern on it. And you can see on there we have got a super jagged pattern. So that's just trying to mimic 
an AC wave. But we do know that this does work for that. So that is excellent. Nice and a little handheld unit like that. So now let's use the signal generator. And I do want to know, can I use the signal generator while I'm using the oscilloscope? So I'm going to try to create a signal and read a signal at the same time. So we'll go red to red and black to black. So it looks like it is reading something. Okay, so we do currently have our signal generator actually running. So we can hit run. If it turns red, that means it is off. If we hit on, that means that it is on. So let's go back to the oscilloscope and we'll hit auto. Cool, so we can see it is in fact reading that measurement. Neat. Let's go back to mode. So we got a sine wave, square wave. Let's see what that looks like. Looks like we've got a little bit of peaking there on the left, not a big thing. That is something that you would be able to adjust just by attenuating with a regular probe. And we don't have that on this, not really a big deal. If it was a big deal for you, just get a regular old probe. We also have sawtooth wave, half wave, full wave, step wave, reverse step wave, index up, index decrease, direct current, multi-audio, sync pulse, Lawrence wave, and that's it. So actually, yeah, quite a bit of different options. Let's see what multi-audio looks like. Oh, that's cool. Neat. Let's go back up to our sine wave, our frequency. Okay, so we can change our frequency right there. Looks like it'll go up to 10 hertz. Looks like the max we got is 3 volts. So as long as we need to generate a signal that's under 3 volts and under 10 hertz, we can do all that right here with this guy. So yeah, we have a signal generator and we have an oscilloscope and we have a multimeter all in one. That is a very handy, very functional, very useful tool.